So this example I did in the last video actually gives us a perfect opportunity to show you a few other things. Uh, first of all, there's kind of a couple problems here. One, I have a query up here, and then I have to re-further query the result of this query up here, down here, in order to figure out which groups or countries have the most people, and so on and so forth. Okay, another issue is I'm calling count, um, well, twice here, uh, twice per group, per each group, okay? So right here I have to have link or this count extension method for each over element inside the group so that we can order by it. And then again, I have to count again so I can actually store it here in my select projectionish kind of thing. Um, so both are bad. Uh, I think the one we're going to resolve in this one first is is the double count because I think that'll be the easiest. Um, you can introduce variables into your queries with a let. Okay, so I'm just going to say let the count equals g dot count. Okay, so we're going to do the the counting once. It's just like defining a normal variable in code when we say int i or know, string name or whatever. I'm saying let count. Uh, bg count and count here returns an int. See, you can see there extension returns an int, and so the compiler will infer this count variable to be an int. Well, now that I've done the count, I can order by the count, and then I can also um, put the count here as well. All right, and then I'm actually it'd probably be better to do a more intuitive variable name so I don't have to type this num customers. If you remember the rules of anonymous types, we can infer the property name from a variable name. That's fine. So I'm actually going to say num customers, let num customers be the be the count and then order by the num customers and then uh, I can select uh, new num customers here. So anyway, when I run this control F5, we see here so bring it to me country, USA, num customers 13. Still nice elegant results. Uh, well, you know, again, this is pixie dust. I always keep saying that, but Tinkerbell's in here waving her wand, and the let clause actually translates into something. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and translate this one just so you can see the rollout of how this how this works. Translate it the way that the compiler translates it. Okay, first of all, first line as always is just the source and the variable name. Now a let, well, let's get the source in here first. Result 2 Okay, a let basically converts to a select. All right, so so here I'll just do it. Dot select, and then it's G. But then watch what happens here. I'm going to select a new num customers gets G dot count. All right, and then this is this is going to get interesting. Watch, watch this, watch this. I'm going to select G and num customers. All right, and there's a reason why the compiler has to do that. We'll see very quickly. I'm going to do dot, and then just like the compiler, uppercase the O, uppercase the B, and then now what's coming into the order by? What did the select return? The select is returning an I enumerable of these anonymous types now. Yes, and this is this is exactly how the compiler does it. So I'm just going to say AT for anonymous type. Lambda, and then, um, oh, it's order by descending. Sorry, i got to put descending because we had descending out here. And then we're uh, order by descending AT dot num customers. Did you see how that just kind of rolled out there? I, I now have done num customers. I, I haven't lost G. I still have G. I stored G here with the num customers in this anonymous type. So then that's going to get even more interesting as we do the select here. Watch dot select parenthesis, and then what's coming in here? What's coming in here? Well, order by descending. It doesn't. It doesn't. Um, it doesn't transform the data at all. It just orders it. So the thing going into order by descending is the thing coming out of order by descending, which are these anonymous types. So again, I'm just going to say at. And then here, well, what's G? G doesn't exist. G is inside of AT. So I'm going to say AT dot, look, G dot key, and then AT dot num customers. So all I had to do is the AT here. It's, it's interesting. The compiler packs these two in together into this anonymous type and then has to unpack it out here. All right, so this is called a, 
AT, these ATs are called transparent identifiers. It's like they're not there. They are really there, and the compiler can see them just fine. But but the but to the whole translation process is they're transparent. They're they're there. It's like the compiler can see through them and see the num customers and see the G hiding in here, so on and so forth. So so that's the translation of a let there. The let turns into a select, and then in this case we introduced a transparent identifier. We're gonna see transparent identifiers in several videos. But now I can just say um, largest group first two here. Notice the result. The result's yet another anonymous type. It's the same anonymous type that we had from the previous query up here. Okay, so we did this intermediate anonymous type just so we can make the rest of the query work. But in the end, we still get the same anonymous type out that we did up here. So when I run this, Control F5, we see the results. The results are the same. Anyway, so that's a let. Now, the next issue I want to want to go into is the fact that we kind of have to do this query and then this query here. Right? I could well, I'll, I'll, I'll we'll get into that next video.